Leading in from the last video, we know that the Black Tusk have invaded the Pentagon with two goals in mind. Firstly, to loot everything they deem useful in their mission. And secondly, to extract the newly developed perfusion bioreactor, the device that could lead to the cure of the Dole Flu. But we didn't have to venture particularly far into these missions to notice a few familiar pieces scattered around the labs. Not only have we found that DARPA has been the brains behind a number of items in the SHD tech arsenal, but they also seem to have been responsible in one way or another for the high-tech gear used by the Black Tusk. For the last 60 years, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, otherwise known as DARPA, has held one mission – to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. DARPA dates back to 1957, the time when the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik 1 satellite into an elliptical low Earth orbit. As a side note for those interested, this satellite and its unanticipated success triggered the beginning of the space race and a new era of political, military, technological and scientific developments. It was at this time that a commitment by the United States was made, so that from this time forward, they were to become the initiator and not the victim of strategic technological surprises. The results over the years have included game-changing military capabilities in precision weapons and stealth technology, but also icons of modern society such as the internet, automated voice recognition and language translation. In the law of the division, it stated that there is a research and development department of the Strategic Homeland Division. This R&D department is responsible for all of the high-level development of proprietary SHD technology, or Shade Tech as it's more commonly known by. This is the SHD group that maintains the agency's arsenal of weapons, field equipment, and custom tech ops gear. I quote, To retain its covert status and avoid intrusive political oversight, Division R&D operates out of a consortium of dummy companies. The law goes on to tell us of how the status of a division agent is considered a state secret, classified at the very highest level. The identity of the agents are only available to the most senior members of the executive branch and the Pentagon. In fact, all division personnel specifications and operational matters are classified as top secret to all outsiders, including high-ranking government officials. At no time does it discuss the possibility of the SHD R&D team working alongside DARPA in order to produce their state-of-the-art weapons and technology. But in saying that, it wouldn't be hard to imagine how this could have happened. DARPA is the national agency with a mission to create the latest and greatest in advanced technology, with particular focus on military. The SHD is a highly classified last line of defense that requires agents to be able to work autonomously without the support of an upper leadership structure. Agents are required to have the best in training and equipment, as their activation is likely to be at a time where the odds are stacked heavily against them. This is only a small thing, but I find it odd that DARPA isn't really mentioned in the structure of the SHD, either in the game or the supporting books and information. More that the R&D team in the division was sort of a DARPA in their own right, somewhat separate from the Pentagon and the Department of Defense. DARPA is a part of the Department of Defense and is highly influenced by political agenda. This seems a little contradictory against a lot of the other information regarding the supposedly isolated branch of the Strategic Homeland Division. Okay, so how about we ignore that for a minute? Let's just say that DARPA are directly involved with the development of the SHD tech that we all know and love, or at the very least, have some sort of collaboration going on with the SHD R&D team. This still doesn't explain why we're also seeing a large number of Black Tusk technologies being developed in the labs. It's possible that what we're seeing in the DARPA labs are just prototype versions of the SHD tech that the division uses, a more finalized, finished version of the product, thanks to the R&D team. But if this is the case, why don't the Division have access to the War Dogs, or the other robotics that we're seeing the Black Tusk using? And why do the Black Tusk have access to any of this at all? We'll get into that soon. I think it's likely that the Division did in fact have access to the larger robotics, drones and War Dogs, and their R&D team could have been involved with the development of them alongside DARPA. In fact, if you look at some of the plans on the walls, it shows them being listed as SHD Tech. But when you think about the role of a division agent and how they spend the majority of their service blending in with society, going about their normal lives, a giant metal robot dog or a drone the size of a bus isn't the most practical tool to keep hidden away. Also, if you think about their role after activation, they're there to keep society together, and the somewhat terrifying looking robot hounds etc. probably isn't the easiest way of earning the trust of the civilians around you. 
We've all seen way too many movies where the robots end up being the bad guys. There ain't no way I'm trusting a robot dog with a 50 cal strapped to his back. Okay, so we've established that DARPA is some way involved with the development of SHD tech, including the prototyping of technology that the SHD didn't end up using, like the war dogs, etc. But how has this ended up in the Black Tusk hands? Holy shit, I can't believe they left all these behind. Are these our drones? The militaries. Though that's a bit reductionist. Reality is that our benefactors supply a lot of organizations. Well, ain't that some shit? Yep. Stay on the winning side. The side with the best tools. When we were first introduced to the Black Tusk, they were described as a large private military contractor with ties to the US government. Shortly after the outbreak hit New York, the Black Tusk were hired by an unknown organization to pave the way for a new dynasty. This included orders to dismantle and eliminate any functioning order of the US government, including the Strategic Homeland Division. By now I feel it's pretty safe to say that this unknown benefactor or organization has close ties to the government. And this isn't really a huge surprise as the government has been using PMCs for many years. The more interesting part is how they've been given the state-of-the-art technology developed by DARPA long before the US military were able to get their hands on it. So these ties in the government must be from the very highest level. The Speaker of the House, Vice President and even the President himself wouldn't have been able to slip a couple of warhounds into his fanny pack while he was off out on a Sunday bike ride and then drop them off at the local Black Tusk reception, at least not without being noticed. We're talking about DARPA and the Pentagon here. I like to imagine these would probably be among the most secure buildings on the planet. But this isn't the case anyway. We know for a fact that the Black Tusk were responsible for at least one of the two deaths of the three top people in the government at that time, with the other death seeming just a little bit too suspicious. And finally the third, the Speaker of the House, being turned to their side to be used as a puppet for future plans. Maybe it's someone on the inside, someone able to sneak some plans out, and the Black Tusk were able to recreate this in their own labs. This was likely to be long before the outbreak first hit New York. But sneaking some plans out doesn't sound like a particularly easy job either. I'm no security expert, but I'm pretty sure there are all sorts of measures in place to make sure things aren't leaked out to the wrong people. No, I think this is much bigger than that. This person or organization has influence and control within the government far greater than those who are supposed to be running the country. They also seem to have extensive resources to be able to fund a PMC as large as the Black Tusk, to have them essentially be the muscle behind the goals of a new world order. These people have been controlling the world for a long time in the shadows. There's no telling how far back this goes. They could have been manipulating the way that the US, and even the world, has been running for a long time. Except now, for some reason, they've decided to pursue a more direct line of control. The Black Tusk are just the front-facing side of a much bigger enemy. We know that the Black Tusk were first employed around the time of the outbreak, but this organization has been working on this for far longer. I feel comfortable in predicting that this organization was directly involved with the outbreak. That Dr. Gordon Amherst was just a front to keep them hidden for a little bit longer. He was just supported and manipulated into carrying out this awful deed that will cripple the US, taking out the government, and leaving it wide open for attack from the only ones on the planet who were actually prepared for the dollar flu outbreak. It was a conversation between Manny and Kelso that really shed light on this unknown organization's plans, even if they were only speculating at the time. I think they were counting on steamrolling us, which they didn't manage to do. They came pretty damn close. These guys specialize in low exposure ops. Get in, do the job, get out. The last thing they'd want is to get caught up in a drawn out engagement that ties up their assets and limits their adaptability. Maybe, but they seem to have a lot of assets. They've got bigger ambitions than just DC. And a quick, efficient, symbolic victory here would help them sell themselves as liberators. You think they care about that? I think their plan depends on them looking like the good guys. Why else would they hook up with Ellis? He gives them legitimacy, which means fewer people fighting against them and more people fighting alongside them. Against the bad guys, meaning us. Meaning anyone that gets in their way. But especially us. This whole thing from the very start was never meant to be seen as a full hostile invasion and takeover of the country. They were hoping to be seen as the heroes, the saviors of the nation. While the country was in its darkest hours, it was them that would help us make it through to the other side. Maybe it was an attempt to show how weak the current system is, and that major change is required. 
They have been making it their goal to show that the true enemy is the government and everyone who supports them. They've worked the Speaker of the House into a position of being sworn in as President after talking him into joining their side. He has been told that he has a part to play later on. This could be to help sway public opinion, or perhaps they were wanting to make an example of him, showing how easy the old government failed due to the in-house corruption. The sheer planning and patience on their part to get to this point is impressive. Horrendously oversimplifying it, their plan seems to have been the following. Step 1. Hire a large private military company, equipping them with the latest weapons and technology and preparing them for the outbreak ahead of time. Step 2. Cripple the country via biological attack. Step 3. Find a puppet in the White House and put him at the head of the government. Step 4. Eliminate any remaining government resistance that have survived the biological attack. This includes the Strategic Homeland Division. Step 5. Collect the broad spectrum antivirals and the perfusion bioreactor. Step 6. Save the country by offering the cure all for everything viral and talk about how terrible the previous government was. And Step 7. World domination. I'm not totally convinced by Step 6. I think there's a little more reason behind why they want the cure so bad, and I haven't really fully wrapped my head around that one yet. Regardless, at this stage they haven't managed to complete Step 5 yet and at both times, it was the remaining division agents that were able to stop them. To the Black Tusk and their employers, the division were originally seen as a minor nuisance to be dealt with, but over time, regardless of how many agents have been killed, they've been proven otherwise. Now is the time to put an end to their efforts. I stated this in the last video on the Pentagon, but I believe the next logical step for the Black Tusk is an operation focused on reclaiming the antivirals in the bioreactor, and putting the final nail into the side of the Strategic Homeland Division. And this is where episode 3 comes in. All we have officially been told at this stage is that the division is on the hunt for Aaron Keener and that he's back in New York. But what I think is actually happening is the division are aware of what the Black Tusk is planning and are on the lookout for Keener as a solution for a couple of the problems that are currently being faced. I stated in the last video that we might be seeing a familiar face, Dr. Jessica Candle, as an expert in the field to run the bioreactor and the mass production of the antiviral but maybe for some reason she can't do it or isn't available. So the next best thing could be Dr. Vitaly Chernenko, who is currently with Aaron Keener. So this is one reason the Division could be hunting him down. The other reason? Maybe the Division isn't ready to abandon the White House. This isn't just the base of operations for the JTF and the SHD in Washington. This is a monument of how things were in the United States before the outbreak and the attack. Perhaps they see this as more than just the abandonment of the current base of operations and that the symbolic meaning behind holding control of such a building is important enough to fight for. Maybe, just maybe, the Division are looking for Aaron Keener for help in protecting the last government-controlled building in the United States Capitol. Those of you familiar with my videos and in my Discord will be used to my crazy ideas around Aaron Keener. Although I agree he has done some pretty horrible things since he was first activated, I believe he has become aware of the corruption in the government long before we were. Keener has been in a position where he's had to fight against former colleagues in order to do what he feels is right for the people of the United States. Up until recently, everyone with the government is against him, and a potential threat. So he's had to play very defensively, and make sure he's always a few steps ahead of us. We don't know how many agents he has under his command, but we can see the difference just one or two agents can make. Maybe the Division is seeking out Keener for assistance. The Division are very quickly becoming the outcasts in Washington. Not the batshit crazy, revenge-driven outcasts, but a force that is outnumbered and slowly losing control of the capital. The Black Tusk and their employers are doing their best to make the division look like the bad guys, and over time, public opinion will change to support those in control, those who are providing more in the way of help towards rebuilding of society. The division only have a few options left. Right now, they hold the tools to success with the antivirals and bioreactor, but there is no way they can hold up against the superior numbers and advanced technology of the Black Tusk. They need to pull all the numbers together that they can, and Keener could be the key. We might even be seeing some of those missing agents from the first wave that I covered whew, probably a year ago now. I'm not saying that we'll necessarily be fighting alongside Keener, but that he might hold the answer to what we need to push back the Black Tusk. Keener himself really is a much lesser threat to what the Division are currently facing. He hasn't really done anything over the last few months that we're aware of. Why else would we risk the defense of the White House at this time by traveling to Coney Island in New York?
This video has basically been a huge NGN brain explosion of speculation on the current and future events of the Black Tusk and Division. I've hinted my thoughts around some of these theories in a number of videos, but I'll be the first to admit that there are many different directions the story could take. Some of this is based on information that could be found in game, and some is purely speculation, with a little bit of hope of how I'd like to see the story go. This script was pretty much written straight from my mind in a single hit. I'd usually have my editor and manager to read over this to help me make sense, and to stop me from going too crazy, but she's been a little preoccupied with the running of the household during this super busy week. I would have approached my executive producer for help, but there's no reasoning with him, he's just a slave driver. Hopefully you were able to follow this okay, tinfoil hat Joe has a mind of his own, and sometimes the train of thought can be a little hard to control. Before I go I must thank a number of you who have shown your support on my new Twitch channel. As I said before this won't be eating into my limited video creation time, it's more of an extra. If you wanted to get to know me a little better or show some support etc. Truth be told I'm a terrible streamer. Too distracted with chat to play games properly, yet too distracted with the game to offer any sort of decent banter. Yet oddly enough I'm finding it a hell of a lot of fun. Thanks again to the number of you who have thrown bits, donations and subs my way. I don't have a schedule or anything so it's super kind of you considering how infrequently I could be doing this. The response has fully blown me away. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you soon in the next one. Cheers!